What is animation? Animation is the art of creating the illusion of life and movement. We can see animation all around us, in films on the big screen, our favourite cartoons on TV, the video games we play on our computers, or that GIF you texted a friend from your phone. There are different types of animation. 2D, 3D, hand-drawn, stop-motion, claymation, puppetry, and many more. How do animators bring still pictures to life? In animation, we call every still image a frame. And movement is created by stitching frames together. The more frames per second, the smoother the motion will look. However, to make their animations more believable and appealing, animators also follow a set of guidelines called the 12 principles of animation. Let's have a look at each one of them. Squash and stretch. This principle refers to the way we can animate objects to get longer or flatter in order to give them a sense of weight, speed and mass. The more an object is squashed and stretched, the softer it looks. Less squash and stretch makes an object look stiffer. One important thing to remember is that the overall volume of the object needs to remain the same during the squash and stretch. When an object gets longer, it gets narrower, or when it gets flatter, it gets wider. Anticipation. This principle is used when characters or objects make an action that gives viewers a clue about what is going to happen next. In this frame, we can see an action that anticipates what is coming next, the toast jumping out of the toaster. Staging. This principle refers to the way that we present or frame an idea, so it's easily understood by the audience. There are many ways we can apply staging to an animation. It can be through acting, setting, camera angle, timing, or any combination of these techniques. Animators also use staging to control where the audience is focused. An example of bad staging would be if too many things happen at once in a scene. We wouldn't know what to look at. To make your audience focus on the actions and the surroundings, you could use a full shot. Or, if you want them to focus on a character's expressions, you could use a close-up shot. Straight ahead and pose to pose. This principle refers to two different techniques of animation. When we animate straight ahead, we are drawing each frame as we go. When we animate pose to pose, we draw the key poses first and then we draw the in-betweens. Follow through and overlapping action. This principle happens when parts of a character's body or object keep moving after the leading part stops. This technique adds realism to animations and follows the rule of inertia. Slow in and slow out. When objects or characters move, the motion often starts at a slower pace, becomes faster and then slows down again before it stops. In frame-by-frame -frame animation, when we want to make objects move slower, frames have to be drawn closer to each other. When we want objects to move quicker, we need to draw the frames further away from each other. Arcs. In nature, motions are rarely straight, but instead follow a circular path or arc shape. When we apply this principle to our animations, objects and characters will move in a more organic way. Secondary action. A secondary action is an animation that supports the main action. It adds additional meaning to the primary action. 
timing. When actions are happening in animation, pauses between actions and their speed are all part of timing. It also affects the way we perceive an animation and the message we are getting across. This principle gives viewers time to process what is happening in the animation. Exaggeration. This is a widely used principle and can be applied to any character's reaction, pose and expression. By using exaggeration, we create a bigger impact on the viewer and the message we are trying to communicate becomes really evident and more believable. Solid drawing. Creating solid drawings means illustrating objects and characters that make us feel like they are placed in a three-dimensional space and have volume and weight. Appeal. We apply this principle to illustrations to make them look interesting and likeable. For example, by using shapes when designing characters or by changing the proportions of characters. Now you know a bit more about the 12 principles of animation, why not give them a go for yourself? Pick an object and bring it to life. <laughs>